Welcome to Introduction to Sociology. Um, what we want to do in today's class uh, is to help you decide if this is really a class that you want to take. And so we're going to answer these questions. Uh, what do we study in this class? What are the purpose or the goals of this class? Uh, what do we gain from this class? What are the requirements of this class? And how is this class to be conducted if we cannot meet in a classroom? Okay. So let us start off with um, the first question. The first question is, um, what do we study in this class? Obviously, sociology. And the next question is, well, what is sociology? Um, sociology is the study of society and the connections between people and society. Okay. Um, a very famous uh, sociologist, C. Wright Mills, put it very nicely. Um, he says, neither the life of an individual nor the history of a society can be understood without understanding both. So let us start um, thinking. Okay. Um, I know that you did not get to uh, participate in an entrance ceremony, but what if you had? What would you have worn? You, what do people usually wear at an entrance ceremony to the university? Apparently, this is a question that bothers a lot of high school students, and some even posted um, a question uh, online, and they got an answer. Well, usually people wear suits. Um, but what do people wear when they graduate? And that will be you four years later. Here's a picture of um, GIS graduation ceremony. Not this year, because we also canceled it, but um, the year before. As you can tell, people wear um, the women, especially Hakama. Okay. Um, and... I can't see you today, but are you wearing hakama or suits today? I guess not. Okay. But why not? Try to answer that question. Why not? Okay. Um, continuing with that, okay, what do you think um, is the appropriate attire for university students? Okay. This is a picture um, wearing t-shirts, baseball caps and stuff, and I guess that would be quite similar to what you think you might wear. But let us look at another picture. These are also university students, but they are university students in the 1950s in the United States, and they were taking exams. If you look more closely, you can tell that they're wearing suits. Okay. So um, what do these examples show us? Okay. Some of you might know this word. Yes, a dress code. Okay. Um, at times when you go to restaurants, they also have this indication of what dress code you expect it to um, follow. Okay. But what are actually dress codes? Dress codes are actually rules about behavior. Okay. What type of rules? Yes, social rules. Okay. Um, and more generally, we call them norms okay, or social norms. These are rules about behavior um, that guide us, you know, to help us make decisions. Uh, here, the examples show what you wear in a particular situation, but it could also be what you do in a particular situation. And that leads us to a more general point about society. And here it is. We are shaped by society and we also are bearers of society. Okay, it seems a little difficult. Uh, what it means is that, um, remember uh, the online question that somebody posted about what to wear uh, at an entrance ceremony? Um, so we give advice to people. We give advice based on the norm that we have learned, and we ourselves also follow the norms. So we follow the norms, and we also make others follow the norms. And that's why we are shaped by society, and we are bearers of society. And this is a very basic idea in sociology. 
um, that we will learn with many examples and many topics through the course um, of this semester. Now, let us get back to, um, guess back to this question again. Um, what is sociology? Okay. Um, we can say that sociology is the study of how society is organized and how we experience life. That gives you a more concrete um, sense of what sociology is compared to the earlier definition I gave you. And this is the definition given by the British Sociological Association. Um, in this idea, actually, are two very important ideas about sociology that I would like to introduce now. Sociology challenges common sense, and sociology makes the familiar strange. For sociology to challenge common sense, um, common sense is what most people, most ordinary people, consider as true, uh, as right, as something that they won't even question. But sociology would raise questions on these common sense. Uh, connected with that is it makes the familiar strange. Um, what is familiar to us is what most people take as natural. Uh, something that is taken for granted. If something that is taken for granted, that means that you won't even question, you won't even think about them. Okay, To make the familiar, the taken for granted, strange, that means that sociology would start from the position that these things are not natural. These so-called natural things, you know, considered natural by many people, are actually not natural. And we always ask the question, why? Why are certain things the way they are? Okay. Um, it is a little uh, complicated, perhaps difficult idea, and I'm going to use a few concrete examples to illustrate that. Let's start off with a morbid example, killing. Okay. Um, I started with a concrete example. Uh, do you remember the case of the man who killed um, 19 disabled people in Sagamihara in 2016 and who recently was um, put on trial? Okay. Um, in many of the interviews okay, or the reports uh, on this case, um, this person, the suspect, was seen, um, uh, was quoted as saying that, well, um, disabled people are uh, unproductive and that having a disabled person in a family brings only unhappiness. Okay. And most people, uh, if you've been following the news, um, ask these questions. Well, why did he kill? What was his family background? And how was he when he was a kid? And so on and so forth. And trying to trace the reasons for his killing to um, this person's uh, individual life uh, and circumstances. Um, but what questions can you ask as a student of sociology? Paying attention to the connection between the individual and society. We might ask questions like, why is productivity valued so much in society? Okay. Why is that a value in society? Um, why are the disabled seen as deficient instead of different? And also, if we want to focus on um, the, the, the man who killed, uh, what social stress that he has experienced as a worker in such a facility. And that takes us to looking at these type of facilities um, and the workers' conditions and so on and so forth. Okay. More broadly about killing, sociologists would ask questions like, is killing oneself a crime? Okay. What do you think? Is suicide a crime? Uh, is it a crime anywhere in the world? Okay. This is a question that I would answer um, in this course as well, and then the question of why or why not. And what effects does suicide have on society? Is it just about killing oneself? Does it have any effects on other people, on society um, as a whole? And what social factors affect the suicide rate in a society? So going beyond looking at the individual who commits suicide, um, how many people commit suicide in a society? What does it tell us about society? And um, this is also a question that sociology asks. 
Let's look at a second example. Let's move from killing to drugs. Okay. Um, you must have received a lot of materials from the university, and the and you should uh, be aware of the uh, university's policy about drugs. Uh, basically, the university's policy is doing drugs is against the law, and drugs are bad for you, and that is why you should avoid taking drugs or being involved with drugs. Um, and sociologists would step back and ask these questions. Why are drugs bad? Are all drugs bad? How? Okay. Um, specifically, marijuana has been in the news a whole lot. Okay. Why is uh, marijuana illegal in Japan? As you know, um, it is legal in some countries in the world. Okay. Let me show you a picture. Uh, can you recognize who he is? Yes, the, um, uh, the track and field star, uh, Bolt. Okay. And he was interviewed about um, drugs uh, one time, and this is what he said. In Jamaica, you learn as a child how to roll a joint, um, and that's a, a drug. Uh, everyone here has tried it. I did too, but I was really young then. Um, and when you think about marijuana being legal in some places, that also makes us ask the question, the next one, can you think of drugs? Oops, I showed the pictures already. Uh, excuse me. Um, can you think of drugs similar in characteristics to marijuana that are legal? And I've already shown this picture here. Cigarettes, for example. Okay. Another uh, examples can you think of? Yes, alcohol. Okay. Um, and what we have seen in this example in, 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 um, is that drugs policy is not just about uh, the medical effects of drugs or is not just about the law but it is also about culture and um, if you look more closely at the history of drugs and when certain drugs were made illegal and who were taking those drugs at particular times in history we would also recognize that um, drugs and the legalization of drugs or illegalization of drugs um, can be explained by a history of inequality um, as well. Okay. Now, let us get to a um, third example. A third example, and our last example as well, is gender. Okay. Um, you must have seen something like this, baby clothes. Okay. And uh, the color doesn't come out very nicely, but the pink one is for the princess, of course, you know, and that's for girls. Uh, and the blue one uh, is supposed to be blue, you can't see it very well that it's blue, um, is um, for boys. Okay. Common. Okay. Um, and the question is uh, has it always been like that? Uh, pink for girls and blue for boys? Okay, let me show you a um, study in the United States. Okay. In 1918, at the turn of the century, okay, um, this researcher has found that in department stores, the generally accepted rule is what color for the boys? Pink okay. and blue for the girls. Okay. The reason is that pink is a more decided and stronger color uh, and therefore is seen as more suitable for the boy while blue, which is more delicate and dainty, is prettier for the girl. Okay, so um, what we see, particularly in this example, is that what we think of as natural, of course, you know, pink is for girls and, and blue is for boys, what we think of as natural is actually not natural. Um, it is made in society. You know, at the turn of the century in the United States is totally different from how we think about colors in today's world, uh, which means that all these rules are made through history, by society, in society. Okay, let me show you um, one more picture. This is a picture of a little being, okay, and uh, the 
dress is white. Okay, it's a black and white picture, but um, even if it's color, it is white. So my question is, is this a boy or a girl? Okay. Um, this little one grew up to be this person. Uh, who is this person? Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, generally known as FDR. Uh, he's the 32nd president of the United States. Okay. No, um, the little one did not change um, his or her gender. Uh, in, it was a boy from the very beginning, and it was, he was, uh, he's identified himself as a boy. Um, what we found out, actually, in the 19th century United States, it is common for boys to have long hair and to wear white skirts. So let us get back to um, a more general question after looking at these three examples. What have we learned so far? Okay. And that's the idea that I shared with you earlier. Sociology makes the familiar strange. Okay. Um, the familiar, let me remind you, uh, is what we consider as natural, what many people consider as natural in society, something that is taken for granted, taken to be just common sense. Um, to make it strange means to see it as not natural, to understand that it is socially, historically made by humans in society. Um, and so what sociology asks us to do is this. Sociology asks us to question common sense and to look beneath the surface of things. There are other questions, uh, similar sociological questions that we can ask. Um, is it more natural that mothers feed their babies with their own milk? Is it natural that parents love their biological children? And if it is not your biological children, um, you might not love them as much. Is attraction between a man and a woman more natural than that between men and between women? So these are the questions that sociologists ask and which we will also take up uh, in the course of this semester. So the very basic way of thinking in sociology is this. Anything that changes through history and differs across culture is socially made. Okay. When something is socially made, it means that it is not natural uh, or unchangeable. That means that it is learned. Okay. If something is made in society, it also means that it can be changed. Some examples are um, the gap between the rich and the poor. So inequality is not something to be taken for granted. Inequality probably involves something um, that relates to how society works. Um, and it is something that we can change and we can reduce the level of inequality in society to give you a sense of the level of inequality in um in society and in the world, for example, let us look at this picture. Um, it looks like an island with a lot of houses, but actually this is um, the residence of just um, one person and his family. That's Bill Gates' house. Okay. And here you see a slump area when people live in shelters. You know, they're not even uh, proper uh, houses. Okay, so that's Bill Gates' house and a slump area, and so we will spend some time to look at how come you know we have this uh, big gap between the rich and the poor in society, uh, and what do sociologists say about that? Um, uh, other examples include discrimination against minorities. Um, again, it is something that is made in society. It's nothing about the minorities themselves that makes them deserve any type of discrimination. Uh, and so long as discrimination is made in society, we can also change and reduce and get rid of discrimination. Okay? And more generally, social norms. Okay? Um, social norms change, and we can change social norms as well, even though we are affected by social norms. 
So for students studying sociology, uh, what would your experience be? Um, sociology uh, is usually taught through active learning. You need to think, you need to be very much a part of the learning process. And we engage with the real world, as you can tell from today's class, uh, use examples from the real world. And we also would do some research, a little bit in this class, but mostly um, in other classes, in the more uh, upper division classes. And uh, this last point is very important. We look behind the facts and we try to understand uh, what um, are taken as facts uh, in society. And um, Anthony Giddens, a British sociologist at the London School of Economics, um, has this to say, no subject helps you understand the world and helps you individually to transform you as a person as sociology does. Okay. So um, sociology gives you employability skills, skills that you can use in any work settings for any careers. Okay. Even though on the face of it, it doesn't seem as practical as, for example, I don't teach you accounting, I don't teach you how to calculate a balance sheet. Um, it's not something that you can directly, immediately take to a particular job, but it gives you the set of skills that you can apply and which are important in any job that you can imagine taking. And so we also think that we're not just giving you employability skills, but we are also giving you life skills. So let us get back to this question. What is sociology after all? Okay. This is my third definition for you. Sociology is a science that requires you to use imagination. Science is something that requires you to be systematic, to be logical, to be evidence-based. Um, and imagination, uh, something that requires imagination, requires you to be open-minded, to be creative, and to be curious. So let us look at what we will learn, actually, in this class week by week. Um, in the first half of the class, in weeks uh, two to three, we're going to look at basic concepts and theories. And weeks four and six, um, we're going to use some of these concepts to understand generally how the individual and society uh, are connected to each other. Specifically, um, we will focus on what is usually called the problem of order. Um, think about it. If you put so many people together, uh, who can be so different individually in a small place. Um, don't you ever wonder why is it not more chaotic? Why don't people have more conflicts than what we see um, today? Uh, and so the question is not so much why is society um, chaotic? The question is why is society so orderly? Okay. And that's a big question um, that sociology tries to answer. Um, in weeks 7 to 10, in the second half, we're going to look at more um, concrete um, issues. Uh, and we'll start off with social differentiation and inequality. Um, I don't know whether you're aware of it or not. Uh, in New York, for example, um, with the COVID-19 epidemic, what it shows is the virus is twice as deadly for black and Latino people than white people in New York City. Okay. And globally, um, men also seem more hit by the virus than women and are more likely to have severe illness or die. Uh, to understand this would take us beyond medicine uh, and we need to understand how society is made uh, and particularly in relation to inequality and that's how sociology um, becomes useful in answering these questions. And... Um, in the last two weeks, we're going to focus on social institutions. Uh, we'll focus specifically on education and family. Uh, some of the issues that we take up would be, for example, uh, this is in the news a lot. Uh, Same-sex marriage has been legalized in many advanced and even some not so economically advanced countries, um, Taiwan being the first one in Asia, for example. Um, would Japan legalize same-sex marriage? Why or why not? Uh, 
we need to understand Japan as a society beyond the individual views on same-sex marriage. Okay? Um, in the original syllabus, I actually had uh, mass media as well, um, and we're not cutting that. Uh, we're cutting that week, but we're not cutting the topic. Um, I'm going to integrate uh, mass media uh, into the various uh, relevant topics, and so we will uh, talk about the mass media um, as well. Okay, let's get us to the um, last question um, that I posed at the very beginning. How is this class going to be conducted? Um, it's going to be online for an indefinite period of time, Okay, uh, as you know already. Uh, there are two ways of doing online classes. Okay, one is what we call um, asynchronously, a, excuse me, asynchronously. Um, not uh, synchronous, okay, and which means not real time. Okay? Um, so, what do we do with not real time? And um, we do slides with voiceover narration. Is what you are experiencing now. Uh, we use Hoppy a lot uh, with discussion, uh, and they have a bulletin board, and I can set up a topic, and we can do discussion, and you can put your views there. Uh, they're in a written form so we can read. Um, and there will be some readings. Uh, there will be a textbook um, and that will be uploaded. And the readings, short, very short readings, will also be uploaded. Um, and it will be harder to gauge participation. And so instead of that, I'm going to have reaction papers and really a few sentences at the end of each class um, to for me to see um, your views, your reactions to the class materials, and there will be one uh, short essay, about 500 to 600 words, uh, one uh, midterm take-home review test as a short one, and then one end-of-term um, take-home exam. Okay. Um, in real time, uh, and uh, depending on students' uh, Wi-Fi environment, if students um, have the resources. Uh, we're going to do a real time um, parts of the time, but not hundred minutes. Okay? We have Zoom meetings. Uh, my imagination is uh, to start off with some introductory remarks of the Zoom meeting, uh, and at times, you know, I can also break students up into different groups so that you can have your own discussions uh, to give you some sort of interaction. Uh, and also on particular topics as well, we can have a whole class type of um, interaction. And of course, for the Q&A, any questions and answer, I will make time for that as well. And in addition, there will also be consultation by email, a phone, and also Zoom, if you like. <laughs>